Some of the trends I can mention are really 20-year trends. Um, so they started in the 1990s, so for example, a focus on outcomes more than inputs um, and the need to, to hold accountable for reaching those outcomes. It's really, really only in the past couple of decades that that started. Um, this has come with decentralization, and every school has more autonomy to do what they want to do. But um, there's also a wish at the central level to make sure that people are meeting standards and, and providing the education that every child should have. So it's partly about accountability, but it's also about trying to use assessment and evaluation as a lever for change. So it's about improvement as well. Transversal skills um, really are quite sophisticated skills. Um, and uh, they involve a lot of different kinds of capacities and our measurement systems really aren't quite as sophisticated um, as the kinds of learning that we're trying to promote. So while we, for example, on large-scale assessments um, want to, to measure whether students are getting good outcomes, uh, we tend to use standardized tests um, which can be very high quality but they are more limited in measuring discrete bits of knowledge and not really um, quite as good at measuring how learners make interconnections, how they're solving specific problems. Um, we're just not quite as advanced in the measurement technologies as we are in our learning sciences. So we need to, to catch up on the two so that they can be better aligned. Well, classroom-based formative assessment is what happens in real time in the classroom with interactions between students, between the student and the, the teacher, or a student reflecting on his or her own learning. Um, and that's when you can really make an impact. Um, if you wait for assessment that comes back a month or three months later, it's not going to have an impact on learning. It's just too late. Um, if you're having it real time or getting assignments back to the learners within a week or two, that kind of feedback can have an impact on what the learner's doing. Um, they have a chance to, to improve. So what formative assessment does is um, it helps make learning goals transparent so learners know what they need to try to achieve. Um, they're assessed at where they are and they can see the gap. And um, the next task is to, to try and adapt teaching and learning so that they can close the gap and meet the standard. So that's helpful for all learners. It's particularly helpful for, for learners who are um, performing less well because they're getting you know, specific help and they're really focused on the task and not thinking about whether they're a good or bad student. Um, and they're getting the right kind of scaffolding to help them reach that. I think we really need to go much further in developing our assessment technologies, particularly for the, the high stakes tests that are so important for matriculation, for accountability, where we really need to have reliable results across populations. Um, those are really hard to do and we're making some progress in digital technologies um, that can um, measure more sophisticated skills through simulations, through problem-based um, work on online. Um, looking at how students collaborate with each other. Um, there's some new research in games-based assessment. So all of those are very promising. Um, in terms of formative assessment, um, the real challenge is, is getting it to happen in classrooms. It's not easy to do. Um, teachers face a number of barriers with large classes. Um, they're not used to teaching in this way. They're more used to giving lectures, perhaps. Um, so they need to get new kinds of competences. They need to be supported to do that how to overcome the barriers, how to develop good questions so that you're really getting at deep knowledge and not just getting a yes-no answer, um, how to, to adapt your teaching once you've understood um, where the learner is and what they need to do, uh, because that requires a whole repertoire of teaching methods. I think one of the, the, the most difficult issues is the question of sustainability. Um, this is across countries. Uh, we conducted a, an online consultation across countries, and this is the thing that came up again and again, is that new governments come and um, reforms are vulnerable to being thrown out the window from one day to the next. Um, so uh, I don't have the answer to that, um, but it seems that the efforts that have been made with, with key competences in different countries, where they've reached out to people in the community, to parents, to employers, they're building a broad base of support um, and that kind of broad base of support could go a long way towards influencing policymakers 
to stay the course with the reform. Yeah, of course, you know, we, we all go to, to um, demo classrooms where we see lots of technology, interactive whiteboards. Of course, to make those useful, it, it depends on a, a sophisticated pedagogy. Um, learners with their own ICT tablets and, and so on and so forth. Uh, virtual spaces where they can learn hands-on, more open opportunities to, to work together and not to be behind little desks in rows. Um, we see schools like that and they're really inspiring and I wish I could go back to school to be there and, and uh, learn like that. Um, but also I think it's, it's a question of moving, moving beyond the classroom, um, giving learners more chance to get out in the community, to go to museums, to go to the workplace, to, to um, visit different places in the community and to be out there actively learning, not just the occasional field trip, but actual hands-on learning. And um, all the community being there as part of that child's education.